What's up Sticks and Hacks? Today is a special test. I got to play the new Fields Ranch East course out at the new PGA headquarters in Frisco, Texas. This course will be the home of the 2027 and 2034 PGA Championship, and after playing the track, I think it'll be a true championship test. I didn't get a chance to fly the drone out there, so the video doesn't quite do the elevation and size of this place justice. The property is massive. The audio wasn't great this day as there's a lot of construction going on as they continue to build out a phenomenal location in North Texas, so we'll have to deal with mostly voiceover. The course starts out with a massive par 5. We played the number 3 tees, which play at about 6,600 yards, and even playing it short, I found that just about everywhere you want to land a ball, there's some kind of trouble. In this case, I favored the left to take the right hand bunkers out of play. I played the course just a few weeks after the Champions Tour came through here, and I'm not entirely sure they had mowed the rough. It was thick and juicy if you missed the fairway. So from here, I'm just trying to lay up short of that creek that you can see meandering through the fairway. This will be a common theme with trouble everywhere you might want to land a ball. That was well struck from the rough, and it leaves me in perfect position after the layup with just a sand wedge in. A lot of the greens are elevated with runoffs, putting a premium on ball striking. So I favored just right of the flag and will be happy to have a putt. The greens are still pretty firm and you're not exactly going to be spinning the ball back and as you'll see later, missing greens is extremely penal. A decent wedge leaves me just 30 feet for birdie and a pretty easy two putt par gets me started on the first hole. The second hole is a really cool hole with a second shot that climbs up to a green that you can't see. Another tricky tee shot where the right bunker isn't in play but the fairway is made pretty narrow by the huge bunker on the left. I mashed on this drive and left it in a perfect spot, just 114 yards left up a pretty big hill for North Texas. I hit my 48 degree really solid, just right of the pin, and from where we stood, it looked long, but it ended up pin high with just 10 feet for birdie. The greens were rolling pretty fast, but definitely grainy. I underread this putt and it'll be another pretty easy par. The third hole goes right back to a par 5 and is a true 3 shotter. Your eyes make you think you can carry the bunkers on the left, but it's just not reasonable. The play is to the right where there's plenty of room. I was a little uncommitted on the swing and blocked it even further right, just through the fairway, but short of the native grass. My ball was actually sitting up in the thick rough, so I hit three wood to get up there as far as possible, just expecting a low knuckler to chase down the fairway. I hit this pretty good, and there was plenty of room for it to chase down, leaving me just 110 yards. A solid 52 degree leaves me just below the hole from 11 feet. I would say the course is scorable if you're in position. I had a ton of good birdie looks in this round, but if you get out of position, it's very penalizing. Exactly what you want from a championship test. I hit a terrible putt for birdie here, my ball kind of riding a ridge. It's a tough read, but with good speed, that's another easy par. The fourth hole is an awesome par 3 from up the hill with a sprawling view of the surrounding area. Exposed to the wind and with a tucked pin, it's not the easiest shot in the world. I'm trying to hit an easy 8 iron to the middle of the green and I just bound it over the back. Still a pretty good look from the apron across a decent slope. I lagged it up there for another tap in par. The fifth hole is one of the tighter fairways. From the tee box, you can't see all the trouble to the right, and you have to hug the left. Hitting it further doesn't necessarily give you much of a shorter shot, as this is a pretty severe dogleg right, so I'm hitting a driving iron as suggested by the par golf caddy. The ball sits up for me again, and I hit a mediocre 8 iron just short of the front of the green. Just didn't get it all. The greens are a good mix of massive and small, depending on the hole. This is one of the bigger greens, and it's a long putt up the hill. Go hard. Face wrong direction. You misread that. I struggled reading the greens early, but I start figuring them out later in the round. Really solid putting inside eight feet has kept me at even par through five. You can see that the 6th hole is just short of 60 yards wide at the landing point, and in general, the fairways play even narrower as they are firm and fast, and many have some slope to kick your ball one way or another. My caddy told me to hug the right side here, and I just straight blocked it. Hit it hard, but too far to the right. We weren't able to find it in the native grass, I don't think we were looking far enough up in retrospect, so I took a drop on the path and hit a 7-iron from 180 yards to a blind green. 
That fairway bunker that is well short is visually deceiving and makes it hard to know where to aim, but I flushed this with a perfect draw, and while I can't see it land, I loved it. Thanks Kyle for helping me look for my ball. Good old Texas stickers will get you if you wander into the deep tall grass. I was surprised to find my ball just five feet from the hole, which after a penalty is a par putt that I roll right in the center, still at even. The seventh hole is a drivable par four, but the green is treacherous. Another where you can't quite see the landing area, and I hit probably my worst drive of the day. Low and thin, and pulled just enough to catch the right edge of the fairway bunker that I should have easily carried. And this bunker is dead. It's roughly 50 yards short of the green complex, and this pin was well out on a peninsula that is quite elevated. I'm not even trying to hit this ball over there, but instead, I'm hoping to chunk one on the right-hand portion of the green doesn't quite get all the way there, and it rolls right back into the valley short of the green. This shot is extremely difficult. Where the flag is is only about 10 yards deep, the greens are very firm, and it falls off on all sides. Off a very tight lie, I'm trying to just lob this onto the first couple feet of green. A little short and it rolls back to my feet, a little long and it rolls down the other side just as this shot did. Oh man, that's not good. That is brutal. I really only missed my spot by a few feet. That's all it takes, and it rolled another 20 yards off the green for another tight lie, with an even tougher shot as now the green slopes away from me back there. Bye. I landed that just a foot or two on the green, and I still couldn't keep it on the surface. Goodbye. I basically get to try my third shot over again, and I'm playing ping pong across the green. Out of position, and it's making this scratch handicap look foolish. I finally get it on the green, and I'm rewarded with 16 feet for double bogey, and just like that, I go from even to plus three. The course has teeth. The eighth hole is a cool par three with the PGA headquarters in the background. It's another elevated green complex, which means missing the green hurts. I'm actually aimed well out to the middle of the green, but with a little too much draw, it ends up perfect, just past the hole on the left-hand side. That was a good miss. I still have to beg it to stop, and now I have 16 feet for birdie, where I finally read enough break to hole one. That's a bounce back from a triple. The ninth hole heads back to the PGA district and is a tricky driving hole. There's a bunker that splits the fairway in two, and just past that bunker, it falls down a large hill into a hazard area. I opt to tee off with just a four iron to try to keep it on the flat part of the hill and hit a solid one just right at the bunker but that leaves a long second shot into a green that is well guarded by bunkers. I was in between clubs and trying to hit a six iron a long way, so I totally bailed out and pulled this one left into a pretty good spot. Not a confident swing, but another good miss. That leaves a little pitch over the corner of this bunker to a pin that's a little bit of a bowl on the front of the green. I hit this pitch pretty good, and it slides just nine feet past with a little uphill right to left putt that I pour right in the middle for par. That's two putts back to back. I'm starting to get the reads right. And outside of the triple, pretty good little front nine. The tenth hole heads back into the wind with part of the Omni Resort on the left. There's actually a pool area that I have a feeling is going to see a lot of golf balls. My caddy warned me to hug the bunkers on the left, despite it looking like there's plenty of room to the right. I hit what I thought was a perfect shot, and with the sloped fairway, it runs through into the rough on the right. For looking like it was center cut, that ball was dangerously close to the native grass. And now I have a long iron shot from the rough to a green that is well guarded. I'm aiming at the far left edge of the green and will take my chances. Smoked it! Wow, I did not think I could go long. I hit that great. Choking up a couple inches on that four iron, all of a sudden I can hit a long iron. That was a good find. That ball actually went just into the native grass over the green and we never found it. I had to take a drop from just 10 feet over the green. And look at that ball sit down. This is what I meant when I said the rough was juicy. That thick Bermuda is tough. You can see it really slow down the wedge as I try to play this chunk and run to a pin that is on another one of those peninsulas. That leaves 12 feet for bogey on a hole where I never really hit a bad shot. Told you the course could be penal. Not the worst shot I've ever hit.
And that ball just never broke, so it's a double. Unfortunate, but I don't get mad at good shots to get bad results. I'm up to four over on the round. The 11th hole is a little bit of a reprieve after the long 10th, but again, they put bunkers and trouble everywhere you want to land a golf ball. We actually played the up tees on this hole, and carrying the far bunker was about 270 yards into the wind. I was trying to stay left of it, but I blocked it. I might have had some anger in this though, because it flew past the bunker and ended up in position A. Just 41 yards to an elevated and sloped green, I hit a pretty good pitch and have another good birdie look from 13 feet. Landed that on the spot, that's a kind of a weird kick on me. This was a tough read, and I pulled in my caddy Jean to help. Got a decent read, but forgot to hit it. That's a bummer, I'll stay at four over. The 12th hole is another brutal par four back into the wind, and another one where the slope of the fairway makes it play narrower than it appears via the par golf app. This ball was really well struck and finds the right side of the fairway. With just 162 yards left, I chose an eight iron, but felt like I was going to have to smash it into the wind. I swing a little too aggressive and will get my first taste of a greenside bunker. That might be in a bunker. Bag nab it, Dallas. Swung too hard trying to hit it hard. You can see just how deep these bunkers are. Even jumping, I can't see the surface, which makes it a little harder to choose and commit to a target. Not bad. I'm gonna have to make a putt. All I can do. I've got 15 feet for par, and I hit a good one, but I overread it and missed on the high side. My first bad bogey of the round. This takes us to the par 3 13th, which may be my favorite hole in the course. This video doesn't quite do it justice, but the bunkering being built up around the green really frames it nicely, and it's a good long test. After going long with a four iron on 10, I back off with a 5 iron, but just don't commit to it. Luckily I missed in a good spot and hit a phenomenal pitch to just a tap in for par. That's when I like it. We can tap that one in with a wedge. Tough par 3, easy 3. The 14th is a shorter par 5, but the green is well guarded with trouble and small, which makes it more reasonable to attack in three shots. The tee shot is slightly blind over these bunkers that are really not in play, and I smoke this one right up the middle. That leaves what should be a pretty straightforward layup. There are bunkers on the left hand side, and it does funnel down to the right, but the landing area is pretty generous if you chose the right club. I did not. I tried to muscle this up there too far, pulled it right into one of those well placed okay, bunkers. Was was really was the worst place I could have hit it. This is dead. Roughly 66 yards to a pen on another one of those peninsulas. There's a creek short, the green falls off long. Course design is just brilliant as it puts you in tough spots. I'm aiming well to the fat of the green, but chances of carrying it that far aren't good, and I take the safe way out, chunking it short of the trouble. Just a really poor layup. If you're gonna lay up, lay up. There was plenty of room 100 yards short of this green. That leaves a delicate 20 yard pitch over a creek that can't go too far or it'll run into the collection area, and I hit a great pitch to have nine feet for par. But I missed that putt. I deserved bogey, a well-designed, tough par five green. Six over through 14 isn't all that bad considering I have a double and a triple on the card, but two really bad bogeys. The 15th is drivable up the hill, but with so much trouble surrounding it, our caddies assured me that it wasn't worth the risk. The correct play is to lay up down the left around 190 yards and then just have an easy wedge up the hill. So after hitting the boring shot, I pulled out a driver for giggles and hit a skinny poor one that somehow avoided the bunkers, but would have been an awkward pitch up the hill. Back to the ball that's in play, I had just 94 yards up the hill, and a pretty stock sand wedge is looking pretty good. Yeah. 
The camera really doesn't quite do the elevation change justice on this golf course, but this is a pretty big hill to billy goat up to the green. It's a really interesting hole and one of my favorites on the course. You can see as I walk up that between the thick Bermuda and the mounted bunkers, there are not a lot of good looks if you miss this green going for it. With my smart layup, I had just nine feet for birdie and I pour that right in for my second birdie of the day to drop back to plus five. The course is fair and scorable if you hit good shots. I guess laying up was the right decision, Dylan. My bad. Oh, so you punch you in the should have never. Yeah, you punch him in the <laughs> now we start the final stretch back to the clubhouse with the long 16th. It plays downwind with a green slope left to right and a creek guarding the right hand side. So it's bombs away while hugging the left. I hit probably my best drive of the day on this hole and it bounded down a good ways to give me just a wedge on this long par four. Unfortunately, the wind kind of switched on us. This hole is very exposed and my wedge came up well short. I am notoriously bad at putting from the fairway and I blow this way by. It's amazing how bad I am at putting off the green. Talk about atrocious bogeys. The 17th is a bit of a reprieve as it's a short par three with a pin tucked just over the bunkers. Kyle may have blocked a bit of it out of the view, but I hit a pretty standard 52 Come degree back. just past the hole for yet another good birdie look. Just 15 feet downhill, down grain. It was a hard putt to be aggressive on, and I never really gave it a chance. That's a tap in par to go to the 18th at six over par. The 18th is an awesome finishing par five with a narrow fairway that cans Useful. left to right. It is tough to get comfortable with what line to hit it on the first time you see it. I smoked this driver and the slope of the fairway almost takes this into the hazard on the right. It looked perfect off the tee and was just 10 feet from danger. I'm in the newly sodded area that's a little shorter than the thick rough to the left and I lay up to a perfect spot in the fairway. At this point, you can really hear the wind whipping as this area is very exposed. It's just 80 yards to the pin, but it's also just 80 yards to cover the creek. This has been my nightmare distance recently, and I don't hesitate to pump two balls into the creek back to back. In retrospect, I should have aimed much further left. Taking on this pin was a bad idea, and it's a really good course design to make for a difficult shot even with a short wedge. Finally, I take my 10 cup moment and just knock it on the back of the green, where I very quickly three putt for what would be a solid 10 to wrap up the day if you're counting at home. That's a lot of shots, but I had a blast playing this course, and outside of the big numbers, I played 15 holes at even par. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, more great golf coming soon. This is a phenomenal golf course, and I can't wait to watch the best in the world play it in the PGA Championship in 2027.